Hi, my name is Bryn Boslett, and I am an infectious disease doctor at the University of California in San Francisco. And today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the viral hepatitises, specifically hepatitis A and hepatitis E. By the end of this session, you should be able to describe the epidemiology, modes of transmission, and pathogenesis of infections with hepatitis A and E virus. You should know the outcomes of infection and the methods of prevention. And you should be able to list the serological tests used for the diagnosis of hepatitis A and hepatitis E infections. There are an estimated 1.5 million cases per year of hepatitis A globally. It is one of the most frequent causes of foodborne illness worldwide. The virus is transmitted through infected stool, and so the main risk factor for hepatitis A infection is poor sanitation, which unfortunately can lead to cyclical epidemics of the virus. As you can imagine, the virus is often associated with areas of the world that have poor public health infrastructure or settings in which people come into contact with less hygienic conditions. Specific high-risk populations include travelers, users of long-term care facilities such as daycares or nursing homes, injection drug users, and men who have sex with men. The first step in the pathogenesis of hepatitis A virus begins with a person ingesting the virus via contaminated food or water or on soiled hands. Once inside the body, hepatitis A begins to replicate in the oropharynx and in the upper GI tract. Once the virus has reached a critical mass, it can enter the bloodstream and travel all around the body. The virus makes its way to the liver hepatocytes, which are its major replication site. From there, viruses shed into the bile, which transmit the virus into the intestines and then outside of the body into feces. Importantly, the virus typically begins shedding into the stool before the liver is damaged enough to give a person any symptoms or signs of infection. The average incubation period for this virus is about one month. So even before a person begins to feel sick, they may have been infectious to others for several weeks. Eventually, an infected host might develop symptoms such as fever, flu-like illness, GI upset, jaundice, and abdominal pain, but they may also have no symptoms at all. The illness can last several weeks, and patients continue to be infectious for up to a week after all of their symptoms resolve. Unlike some of the other hepatitis viruses, patients infected with hepatitis A typically develop antibodies rather quickly. IgM against the hepatitis A virus can typically be detected even before symptoms begin, which is helpful when investigating a possible exposure or outbreak. IgG antibodies are usually detected after about a month of infection, which is usually when symptoms are beginning. Virus can also sometimes be detected in the blood and in the stool by molecular diagnostic techniques such as PCR, although these tests are not used very frequently uh, for this virus. Hepatitis A is thankfully a self-limited disease. There are no chronic infected carrier states, and the treatment is usually supportive care. Patients who recover from hepatitis A are typically immune for life thanks to the anti-hep A IgG antibodies. Unfortunately, some relapses can occur, usually within the first six months after the initial infection of the virus. Quite rarely, hepatitis A can cause a severe and fulminant form of hepatitis, which carries a very high morbidity and mortality rate, liver transplant being the only real treatment in these rare situations. This complication is more likely to occur in patients who are older or have multiple medical conditions or in patients who have other underlying liver diseases, although occasionally young and healthy people can be affected. Public health measures such as improvement in sanitation and hand washing awareness can help to decrease the spread of this infection. Additionally, hepatitis A vaccination was introduced in 1995 and is now recommended routinely for all children who are one year of age or older. For people who have not already been vaccinated or are unsure of their vaccination status, 
the hepatitis A vaccine is recommended for anyone who's at high risk of infection. So again, this includes travelers who are going to hepatitis A endemic areas, anybody who has a chronic underlying liver disease, injection drug users, and also men who have sex with men. Additionally, both the vaccine and a hepatitis B immunoglobulin have been shown to be effective in preventing symptomatic infection if they're given within two weeks after an exposure to the virus. Hepatitis E virus is actually the leading cause of acute viral hepatitis in the developing world, with an estimated 20 million cases annually. The overall burden of disease is highest in parts of the world where clean drinking water is scarce as fecal contamination of drinking water is a major route of transmission. In the developed world, where the disease burden is lower, consumption of undercooked meats is another well-recognized mode of transmission. Like hepatitis A, hepatitis E virus is an RNA virus that has similar pathogenesis. Clinical features of hepatitis E are indistinguishable from acute hepatitis caused by any of the other hepatitis viruses. The incubation period is a bit longer than hepatitis A, ranging from 15 to 60 days with an average of about 40 days. This virus can be diagnosed by serology, including IgM in the acute phases of infection and IgG, which usually appears a few weeks later. Hepatitis E infected persons exhibit a wide clinical spectrum, ranging from asymptomatic infection through acute fulminant hepatitis. The ratio of symptomatic to asymptomatic infection has not really been determined and may vary on the viral genotype and the epidemiologic setting. However, it's important to know that severe disease is more likely to occur in pregnant women. Pregnant women have been found to have up to a 20% mortality when infected with this virus, particularly if they are infected in the third trimester. Underlying liver disease, immunocompromised state, and refugee status have also been associated with poor outcomes from the hepatitis E infection. Happily, like hepatitis A virus, there is no chronic carrier state. There is a recombinant vaccine for hepatitis E that has been available in China since 2012, but this is not currently approved for use in the U.S. Here's a table that you can use to summarize some of the main facts about the hepatitis A and the hepatitis E viruses. Thank you for your time and attention, and here are some of my image references.